Hello everybody and welcome to today's stream which is has been replaced because normally well I say normally on my schedule earlier in the week I said that I was going to be playing keep talking and nobody explodes but I think in the sort of the last minute I decided to change my idea I'm gonna give you up hello hope you're having a great time today and yes, as I was saying, I was planning on doing a game stream where I played Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, but I decided I would do something else. Because for people like you, Never Gonna Give You Up, who have a sub to the channel, you know, one of the benefits is that you can have something like the emotes, right? That's a very big draw to why people would want to sub. But as of right now, you guys don't really have any subs to use. So I thought, Let's change that. Now normally you would go and, or people would go and commission people and that could take some time, right? You have to find somebody, you have to organize prices, you have to make sure that they have commissions open. So I thought, screw it. Let me just do it myself. So here we are today. <laughs> I'm gonna try my hand at drawing my own emotes. I have never drawn anything before in my life, but I think it'll be quite interesting to see what I'm able to come up with. Uh, you'll be playtesting the emotes? Ah, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I will say though, I'm gonna cheat. You can see it in the top right there actually, that um, I actually have something that I can work on already. It's this over here. This is a sketch art done by the lovingly drawn Artino Enjo. This is obviously just a, well this was supposedly just a rough art, which, I mean, in my eyes this looks like the perfect image already. But, as practice, I have been tasked with the challenge of trying to do the inking and the colouring of this emote. And then, uh, I think this will be the first emote that we can use. Now, it is very cute, I agree, never gonna give you up. Now obviously this was drawn with things like a tablet and all that stuff and, you know, the very guided hand. All of that, I do not have. I do not have a very steady hand, I do not have a tablet. But, uh, I do have a mouse and I did do some googling of how to at least try and get some good lines. So today, we're gonna try and do the inking for this. Apparently, I didn't even know what inking was, I had to read up what it was. It's essentially like if these are all the sketch lines, like over here you can see there's multiple lines done here. Inking is essentially just taking a single line and doing it over that. So imagine something like that. But obviously not as rough as that because that is a very poorly drawn line. It's not very straight. And I think I realized drawing with a mouse is incredibly difficult. Like even just trying to trace these lines. If I were to try and just follow this line with my hand. It's not the easiest, right? Like if you look at it, if you zoom out, it's, uh, you know, these are a lot to be desired. But I learned that there is this tool here called, what is it? The Bezier Curve Tool. Now this is very cool. Let's actually hide this. So if I draw just a random curve, right? With a regular brush. It looks okay, it looks very wobbly, you can see like the, the wavering in my hand. And that's even with the stabilizer, right? If I turn the stabilizer off, you can see it's a lot more jank, I suppose, for lack of a better term. But let's turn the stabilizer back on. But, with this Bezier Curve tool, the way it works is, let's say you start at one point here, so I click over there. And then I go all the way down here to the bottom. And it looks, it looks like it's just going to be a straight line, right? So if I click here again... Oh, whoops. Never mind. If you click and hold, and then I, as I move it around, you can see it generates this curve type of thing going on here. So depending on where I release it, that changes how the curve will look. So I let go there and hit enter. We have a much smoother looking curve. You can see here on the left, it's very 
janky, like my hand wavers in the middle there. And then it, my hand just goes straight down for a certain portion of it on the right as well. Here you can see the middle part is also fairly straightish, whereas the line drawn with this Bezier curve tool is nice and smooth. Very nice. But that's essentially all I've been able to figure out beforehand. And th those are the only tools I'll have now in my attempt at inking this lovingly drawn sketch art. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, we can start with the mouth. I know, oh, I had to make sure that I know the very important thing is having the correct layers, making sure they aren't accidentally drawing in the wrong layer. Because I, I mean, I'm no artist, but I know I always see the memes that people complain about where you've drawn the, in the wrong layer or something like that. I've got some mat <laughs> black magic going on. I mean, it's literally just a, a built-in tool. Kinriko, interesting. The line tool is so smooth, truly. It is Kinriko. Kinriko, sorry. It's a... Uh, when I first found out about it, I was like, wow, that's crazy. Because, you know, I did say that I had... I've had no experience drawing, which is kind of true. It's, I've had no experience drawing creatively. But technically speaking, I have drawn before, but that was in the scenario of engineering drawings. And engineering drawings are very much more, I suppose, geometric, if I could put it like that. Like when I was drawing for engineering stuff, every single line was drawn with a ruler. Every single curve was drawn with a, a compass, I think it's called, what it's called. That thing with the point on one end and the pencil on the other end. And everything was measured and calculated. There was no, there was no freehand going on. Whereas here now, normally everything is done freehand. But I think this Bezier curve tool was a very nice break from that because it made me remember that, you know, the geometric possibilities are there because that's what I'm used to from the engineering times like look at that that mouth looks all right I suppose there's no way I could have done specifically this bottom cover of the mouth with a with just my free hand but I think the like I said this sketch art is done really really well Engineering drawings, damn, that sounds even more intimidating, to be honest. It's it's really not. Engineering drawings are a lot more, like I said, because everything is calculated, right? All the lines have a purpose. All the lines are sort of, there's a reason behind them, right? Engineering drawings are much simpler than they would sound. Is that the, like a little nose highlight? Yeah, that's fine. Because... There's no sort of guessing. For example, if I draw a line here, I could say, oh, that line looks good or could look bad. But with engineering, you know that it looks correct or not. Which is, I think, a lot or the interesting thing about art because you know, everything is always subjective. Which, uh, I don't want to say I struggle with that, but the, the thing I noticed when looking at people doing art is people are very critical about their own stuff. I remember when I was in high school, I would always see graffiti, right? I mean, I'm sure everybody had graffiti going on in their high schools. Like, for example, the one thing everybody saw, if I quickly do a little sketch over here, is this. I'm sure all of you will recognize this. We'll start out with three lines here, another three lines here. Now the order might be different, but then you always do this up here and another one at the bottom and I forget the directions that the next lines go but then you have these lines oh my goodness that was ugh. Okay, this looks very bad but I'm sure everybody recognizes this right there's different names but it's this at least at our schools we call this the super s but I would always see it drawn everywhere on my desks or underneath the desk and stuff like that and I would think, wow, that looks so cool. But then I would try and draw it and even though technically speaking, it's the exact same thing, 
I would look at it and I would go, but why does mine look so much worse? You know? Even though it's literally just, what, six lines and then connecting them together? For some reason, I thought that my six lines were worse than other people's six lines. Which I think explains the subjectivity. Because I'm sure the people that drew them, those original ones themselves, may have also thought that theirs were subpar. You're surprised I can use the mouse to make such straight lines? You've never heard of this S? Really? Kinriko, what? I'm amazed that you've never heard of the, the Super S. I know it's, there was a YouTube video about how supposedly places everywhere around the world knew about that. It's like always, you see it always in graffiti, right? Everybody always draws that in high school. Like there's that and then there's that, I don't know if it's a meme or not, but that thing where there's a wall and a guy peeking over it. I know that's also a pretty popular thing that people draw as graffiti stuff. Uh, let's see. What else is there to draw? Oh, the eye here. Ooh, actually, let me go back to using the Bezier tur curve here. The other thing I need to be careful now is the is the thickness of these lines. Let's see. So now, like on the right side here, you can see this panel. There's all these different types of brushes and like there's an airsoft brush, a basic flow opacity brush. Like when I opened up this critter for the first time, which is, it's a free, I suppose a digital art application, you can call it that. I just thought, you know, well, coming from Microsoft Paint, you just have the pencil tool, maybe the air can tool, maybe the brush tool. There are so many different things here. That's just, it's actually kind of scary. <laughs> so I might be using the wrong tool or whatever, but I'm just using whatever I feel like is comfortable. Because I know there's all these different brushes that you could be using to get different types of effects and things like that. But I'm sure I'll leave that to the actual artists that know what they're doing, not me. Let's see. And you know, I currently have the Nintendo music playing in the background, but when I was looking for something to play, I know normally people put in stuff like the lo-fi beats, right? You think the classic, what is that channel called? The lo-fi beats to study and chill to, with the, the girl with the headphones bobbing her head slowly with the cat in the background. And I thought, I actually went and listened to it just a couple minutes before, before because I was going to use it. But then I realized, wait, let me actually make the size of the brush a little bit smaller here. But yeah, I was listening to it and it's currently like 10 o'clock for me right now. And I realized, oh my goodness, it's a bit too relaxing for me because I am 100% going to fall asleep if I listen to that. So instead I chose some light-hearted Nintendo music, mainly because, I don't know, Nintendo music, you can never go wrong with it as background music. Plus, with some of these songs like the the theme, uh, what is it? The Wii theme store music? The whimsical and silly nature, I think, fits well with my whimsical and silly attempts at trying to draw. Let's see. I think that looks okay so far. If we hide the... Ah, it looks about alright. The mouth the bottom of the mouth does look a bit iffy though. I feel like it could be a bit more curved. Let's see, maybe I can try and curve. I'm, how would I make this a bit more curved? I'm not sure. Uh, erase a bit of the top part and have it look a bit less flat. Uh, I mean, to be fair, with stuff like emotes, right? They're going to be super tiny. It's going to look like that over in the chat, right? I don't think anybody's going to notice, but it's a little bit off. The amount of brushes are mind-boggling indeed. Also, the music is so nice. It's a funny but chill upbeat music. Yes, that, that, that's the thing. It's, uh... You know, I'm just having fun here, and I think... 
The music is very fitting then with it. I also don't want to fall asleep on stream, so that's why I steered away from the lo-fi beats. Hmm. Let's raise that up a bit. Go back to the good old Bezier tool. Ooh. Ooh, looks a bit weird. Hmm. I think that looks fine. Let's see. I'm scared to attempt the the stuff that has a lot of line work because I'm not sure where to put the lines. So let's go at the these little eyelashes first. I know I was considering, like I said, I do still consider the possibility of drawing my own other emotes, but I just I got very scared at the thought of trying to draw specifically the hair. Because, I don't know, there's just something about hair that scares me. I mean, even with this, the model that I'm using now, this Vroid model, trying to get the hair for this thing was a nightmare. People who have tried to work with Vroid would know, but normally you would have to, tr it's weird, you draw the hair with a brush. So as you draw it, it's like the individual sets of strands, which is very weird. Which is why, don't tell anyone this, but it's a secret, but I actually, for the hair for this model, I just used a, I found like a preset, I suppose you could call it, on Booth, a Japanese website. And I just downloaded that and used that. But I mean, it worked, so I'm not gonna complain. Let's see the, I think it's looking, Okay, so far. But let's see then. I'm not sure how well this will turn out at the end, but even if I can't use this as an emote, I think it will look very nice. Just to have as like a maybe profile picture or something like that. Let's see then. Ooh, maybe I made the brush a bit too big, I think, for that. Turn it down a little bit. Because this, this one does seem to be a little bit thicker than the one below it. Man, this, this curve tool is actually so useful. I just have to click on like the start and end point and then adjust it to try and get the, the correct angle. It helps that all of these lines are very nice to follow. Let's see. Down there. Down here again. Oh. There we go. It's almost like the like these sketch lines are also drawn with this curve tool. With how almost precisely they fit in. Drawks and have a good eyes for composition. Oh, thank you. I remember I felt like a kid in a candy shop when I was searching around all the different components for this model. Things like the uniform, the hair, and all the different facial features and stuff like that. Uh, let's make it a bit bigger for this one. The only issue now is I have no idea what to do with some of the overlapping lines. Also, I don't know if I should be doing all of this on one layer. I know... With coloring, people normally do like the line art and color separately. But if it were me, I would be having like almost each and every line on a separate thing. Just because I'm worried about the overlaps and stuff like that. Hmm. Let's see, next we can do... Is, let's just do the rest of the facial features. And then we can worry about things like the hair afterwards. So let's make a big curve over here. A wink. And I can actually just fill this in normally with the regular pen. Let's see. Whoop. And there we go. I think that's fine. What? Uh, okay, yeah, it does have like a... It pans out towards the end like an eyelash. And then the tiny little blushes over here. Whoop. Maybe that's a bit too small. Because again, when these are going to be zoomed out, 
some of these lines might be a bit too hard to see. And another one there. And a tiny little spot over there. Hmm, what next now? What next? So is the outline of the face I can do? So let's make it back to size 5. How big is this going to be? Uh, there we go. Follow that line. Follow this line as well. Uh, actually, wait. Instead of doing that two separate lines, I can do it as one long line. One there. Whoop. Curve that ever so slightly. And then come up here again. Give it a little bit of a curve. I don't know, I think having slightly curved lines is a bit more natural than just having solid straight lines. Makes it feel a little bit more natural. And then here we have the neck. How does that look now actually if we turn down capacity? Ah, I think it looks fine. Might look a bit too like, what is it? Too perfectly rounded, but I think it's fine. Oh, OBS, no! Why are you dropping up and down? Come now, OBS, stop struggling. Oh well, hopefully it sorts itself out. Hmm. I feel like doing. What is it? Maybe this lower half here next. <laughs> I'm essentially trying to stay as far away from the hair as possible because it's quite. I mean, hair is always a mess, I suppose. So let's see. The rest of the coat over here. The collar, I think. So that can come around there. And go down to the bottom. That looks fine. A little crease over there. Ooh. Going a little bit off of the lines here, but I think it should be a little bit okay. And come down again. Uh, I mean, it looks like... Yeah, those two lines at the bottom look like they would meet up at a fairly acceptable place, I think. Actually, maybe... That'd be a better... No, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Actually, yeah, that looks fine. And then the rest of the shoulder. Up to there. I think that looks fine. <gasps> Wait. Oh no, I was drawing all of those lines on the on the sketch line layer. No. Oh! How much of that did I do in there? Oh. Well, at least I can just trace it back, I suppose. I I think I now understand the memes of people saying that they draw on the wrong layer and waste all their time. Well, at least I can follow these back fairly easily. Oh man, I was... At least I checked there. It would have been tragic if I had gone a lot longer before noticing that. Let's see. Oh wait, hang on. Wait, now this is gonna this is gonna confuse me now. How do I get rid of the How do I get rid of the black lines on here though? I mean, I could leave them, I suppose. They basically overlap anyway. Now it just looks weird though. Ah, it's fine. Hmm. Let's now I suppose work on this hand over here. This is the the cuff of the shirt or the. Uniform, I suppose. Ah, I did it again. I was drawing in the wrong layer. Okay, there we go. Put it over there. And, hmm. Uh, I'll have to extend the, the chin part. Does that look fine? Yeah, it does. Uh, 
what would be over there? The rest of the shirt, I think? Maybe some of the... Some of the cuff as well. What if I just connect that? I suppose, yeah, it's like the, the bottom of the collar. Let's see then. Now the hand comes out here. And then this is the pinky. Oh my goodness, hands are hard to draw. Uh -oh. Maybe I should actually use a slightly thinner pen because this is a lot of very high concentration of lines. So there's the rest. Oh god, the pain of drawing on the wrong layers. Yeah, I, I now understand what people mean when they say that. I know the other thing that people always joke about is, again, it's, I don't know why I recently been getting drawing videos recommended to me on YouTube, I don't know. Um, it's looking very clean though. Oh, thank you. But some of the videos that I've been recommended are the whole when you draw on the wrong layer memes, as well as the, what is it called? People, what people sometimes do is apparently when they, I'm, I assume it's exaggeration, but they'll have an image and then they will flip it. So, wait, they'll do that. And then they'll be like, they'll, their eyes are gonna be completely skewed. The mouth is completely off, which I think is just exaggeration. Like they maybe edit it so it is a completely different image when they flip it. But it's something that I, I always thought like, what is the point of that though? Apparently, the whole flipping thing is that you do it to see the different perspective because when you're drawing it on one side it might look normal and natural but then you flip it around and it realizes oh wait it's actually completely out of proportion which I never knew so there's a lot of woes that artists have when they try and do things it's actually really interesting though to see and it makes me appreciate them so much more like all the work and effort that they must go through. Oh, that's a, mm, ugh, that's a rather sharp looking finger there. Let's try and around that a bit more. There we go. And then the rest of the pinky. Four fingers. I don't know why I forgot how many fingers a person has, but <laughs> let's see then. And then we can come up here. This is the big index finger now. Uh oh, that's not connected though. Let's zoom in a bit. Wonderfully said, yeah. <laughs> About the um, the pain that people have to go through. There we go. The four fingers in front, and the thumb would be behind the heart, holding it up. Uh, let's just connect this properly, though. There we go. And I suppose the rest of the face would have to come up here as well. Uh, so let's see. This point over here would be the chin. So if you were to draw it long smooth curve there uh, like that. oh wait I've got the size there uh, what size did I use for the other side of the face I think it was five let's see then what program am I using I'm using a program called Critter it is a yeah it's a free drawing application I know I was intending on using a thing called GIMP but uh, apparently it's not very good for actual drawing. Painting. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that should be a different category. I'm not doing art. Right now I'm painting. But welcome, Bodega. It's always good to see people that know what they're doing. Hopefully 
my attempts at art are appealing enough for you. Let's see though. Uh, let's work on this other last hand over here on the side. Cool. I know, Bodega, you're also an artist that uses a tablet. Uh, you know, I want to call it cheating, but I think what I'm doing now is way worse of cheating. Ah, yes, good old GIMP. Never gonna give you up? Yep. Good old GIMP, aka budget Photoshop. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what I use it for anyway, for making thumbnails and stuff like that. Ooh, that was a rather pointy hand over there. Let's see. How do I make sure that this isn't too funky? Ah, that's fine, I think. There's a slight curve as well. There we go. That's fine, I think. I'm doing your best? Oh, I heard Crypto is better, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to uh, Gimp. Yeah. I'm doing my best and that's all I can ask for. I'm glad, Bodega. It really, honestly, having the... Uh, the Pokemon drawing collab with you last week was actually really, it opened my eyes because you know, that was honestly the first time I'd ever tried to draw I suppose, with um, actual intention and it was really fun even though obviously my drawings were not the best but it was just re refreshing to be so happy doing something so bad. And yeah, the, the main reason, Bodega, I don't know if you were here earlier, but I would have done this in GIMP, but the main reason I'm using Critter is because of this tool that I'm using. My crutch, essentially, is this Bezier, or, yeah, Bezier curve tool, where initially I would have been trying to draw by hand like this. Oop. Wait, why is this locked? There we go. These types of curves, and I mean, you can see these curves are not very smooth they're very janky but with the power of this curve tool i can click the start and end and then adjust the curve so it's much 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 more smoother i actually learned that from a youtube video that got recommended to me out of nowhere you're glad i had fun it was indeed fun i hope and i think it's honestly sparked a fire in me I feel like I don't know for me like obviously I can appreciate um, good art I think we all can but there's something about I don't want to say bad art but people that try their hardest it's always fun not fun but I can appreciate the attempt that people do oh wait I'm drawing in the background again aren't I uh, I was The pen tool is great. It is, yes, yes, yes. Oh, ooh, wait, hang on. These fingers over here look a bit iffy. Can you zoom out? Like an odd pixel or something that's off. Let's maybe clean that up just a tad bit. There we go. Oh. Let's see. I think that looks better. Oh, there's like tiny specks. Ah, you know what? It's fine. When you zoom out a lot, you don't really notice it too bad. Let's see. Wait, why are there random spaces here? Oh, right. It's because I... For the hair. Should I connect those? Ah, that's fine. The hair will come in later on. But now then, let's work on this heart. Hmm. Quite thick here. I wonder if I should... The heart should obviously be red, right? But do I outline it with red as well? Or do I give it a solid solid black outline? I think a solid black outline is fine, and then giving it a red full will be enough. Let's see, how does this... You know, speaking of drawing hearts, and uh, earlier I was talking about doing... The only times I had ever drawn before was with engineering drawings. It's going to sound super cheesy, but I still remember... Wait, why is... Why is nothing drawing? What's happening here? Why is nothing happening when I draw? What is going on? Why is nothing appearing? 
Uh oh. Did I do something wrong? Wait, what? Oh, I'm using the eraser tool. That's why. Oops. I've been erasing stuff this whole time. It only matters how it looks when it's small. <laughs> you know, taken out of context, but I understand that we're talking about how the emote looks when it's small, but just seeing that comment out of nowhere. <laughs> it only matters when it's small. <laughs> I can't help but laugh at that. But yeah, as I was saying though, with this heart, before, I had only ever done engineering drawings where, you know, everything was done with a calculated reason. If a line was a certain place, it was because it had to be there for specific reasons. And when I first learned, you know, the basics of drawing stuff, there were things like circles or intersections and stuff like that. And... <laughs> I mean, guys, come on. You... I'm not the only one who thought that, right? About how that comment of how it looks when it's small, right? I cannot be the only one who thought that. Surely. Guys, I promise I have a pure, pure mind. <laughs> but yeah, onto the topic of the engineering drawings and hearts. It's gonna sound super cheesy, but the first thing I did once I had learned how to draw like proper circles and learn how to intersect them and or, like find the point of intersection was I drew a heart for Valentine's Day and I I sent a picture of the drawn heart to some girls in my class and the thing is like I was like oh look it's a, a heart but drawn with like engineering style and I still cringe to this day thinking about it uh, let's see Listen, Bodega, stop calling me a pervert. You're the one that said it. It's not my fault that you said such things. Have I seen Spaceship, spaceship Making Street? I have not, no, but I should absolutely give it a, a look though, I think. I, I wonder if I can actually do it now as a... Like, if I remember correctly, you would take a circle... Wait, why can I not? There is invisible. Oh, whoops. If I remember correctly, you would use a compass, right? And you would use a compass and you would draw a circle here. And then, oh, I suppose at the similar height, you would draw the exact same circle somewhere else. And can I move this? Uh, where is the move button now? So, okay, well, well, let's just work with it for now. Imagine those two circles are similar. Then what you would do is you would take your compass, which is the... It's a thing with a point on one end and the pencil on the other end. And you would put it in the... You would put the compass in the center of the one circle. And you would... Sort of draw a bigger mark. Like that. And then you would do the same with the other one. Put a point there. And draw a mark at the other side. And then where they intersect, that's sort of the point of the heart. And then you would take a straight line and connect it from where they intersect to the tangent to the circle. Actually, let me use it in red so you can see what I mean. You take the tangent point and connect it to the intersection. Do that for both sides. And then, obviously, these circles would also be red. Like that. Uh, and also, the circles would be big enough that they eventually like overlap in terms of their size. And that was how I drew a heart back when I um, was in engineering classes. It was very cheesy, I'll admit that. There's probably a reason why those girls never uh, interacted much with me after that. But let's see, let's carry on with this heart here though. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Work on the other side of it here. 
And I suppose these are little like highlights for the heart because I suppose it comes out a bit. Ooh, that looks a bit iffy at the connection there. Mm. How does that look? Uh, that looks fine, I think. It's interesting to hear it in this way. I mean, it's only because, I don't know, I feel like, again, whenever I try to draw stuff, I, it just felt like I was drawing things wrong. Like, again, coming back to that Super S thing, I guess it's because of the fact that I drew it myself, so I, I was very critical, I guess, of my own work. But when it comes to, like, engineering drawings, you know there's a right and a wrong way, technically speaking, to draw stuff. Although I suppose I do have similar experiences of, you know, not necessarily doubting yourself, but being like your own work is inadequate. But mainly when it comes to cooking, because I know for a fact my cooking is bad. Especially in comparison to, for example, my mom. I remember, well, I still remember, I know whenever I try and make sandwiches for myself, compared to, say, when my mom makes a sandwich, it is crazy the quality and taste of when she makes food versus when I make food. Let's see then. Let's give the little highlights of the heart. A sharp edge there. Let's round it out a bit. Oh, actually, there we go. Why is this so difficult now? All of a sudden, come on, curve tool, don't fail me now. That's fine, I think. But I will say though. I'm at least glad that my cooking isn't as bad as my dad's because my dad's is way, way, way worse. Oh, OBS, come on. Are you back yet? I just see the red square of death I'm showing my low upload rate. here as well. Ooh, that was not connected very well. There we go. And come around here again. And finally connect up. It's almost like the, the heart has eyes. Uh, I can do a better job at connecting that. Hmm, now the hardest part I think is doing the the hair hair is always going to be a pain I think hmm. but we have to start from somewhere so let's do the hair now where do I start though? Uh, let's start on this left side here this strand over here I think it might also be a good idea to make it slightly thinner for these lines considering how many of the hair strands they're going to be. One. Ooh. Other strand. There we go, our first hair strand. <laughs> Second one here. strand here, another one here, hmm, is that connected? Yes it is. Let's do another strand over here, and oh, there's another heart coming up over there, there we go. Now for this little heart here. It's almost like the heart is a, a hairpiece as well. Go up, up to there. A little curve here. Oop. And 
we're on here again. Slightly a little lopsided, but I think it's fine. Actually, yeah, I feel like I can make this look a little bit better. Right there. Ah, I mean, it's close enough, I think. The first test run? Yeah, <laughs> the first of many. There's so many of them. Oh my goodness. Yeah, hopefully the stream isn't too... Well, the stream is very choppy, but hopefully it's still watchable. I can see in OBS it's very all over the place. Oh, oh no. The music. Where did it go? I'll get it back in a second. I cannot do art unless there is funny Nintendo music playing in the background. It is actually integral to the experience. Where is it now? Where were we? I think we were about here? I think this will be a good enough spot for the music. Anyway, back to the hair strands. Where were we? Let's see, is there... yeah. There's even a tiny little one here as well off to the side. And there's some more... Sort of like the messy bed hair that flakes off to the side here. I don't know if, like that hair strand there I made it very rounded but I suppose hair isn't very round is it it should be pointy and straight hmm so let's have that spike back around there we go that's a bit better I think you know <laughs> uh, you know that feel that there you go with the the shitty internet <laughs> Hitting everybody, I think. Which is weird because I know in weeks before my internet was fine. And yours too, I remember. I guess there's there's a greater being out there that doesn't want us to stream. Okay, that looks fine. Oh, I I just love it when I have a line like that. Where there's a big long line. And I can get it to fit perfectly with the curve tool. Let's see. Oh. Let's see how it's looking so far. Ah, it's looking pretty good. Hmm, actually, I wonder if I should make these hairlines a bit thicker. Also, it annoyed me that, again, like I was saying, this strand here is a bit too rounded. I feel like the hair should be point here. Let's see if we can fix that up a bit. You can always change the image later. Oh, that's true. Oh, I can always do that. Like I was saying, I just want to try and get emotes out, not really as soon as possible, but sooner rather than later, so that the people who are subscribed and who can use emotes can use them. Plus also so that people can use the channel points to redeem them. I made them, I would have made them, if I could have, cost like one channel point, but sadly there is a minimum that you have to have them be at least 80 points. So, there is that. But I don't think it should be too hard to get 80 points. Because it's 80 points to unlock the emote for a full day. And I'm pretty sure you can get, like if you come back every single day, you'd be able to unlock it on a regular basis. 
I should actually, now that I think about it, I should probably save as well. I haven't saved once. Uh, let's see. I would hate for this <laughs> to suddenly crash. And then lose all of this progress in the last hour. up here. 80 is super cheap? Yeah, it is super cheap. Like I said, I would have tried to make it cheaper, but 80 is the minimum. Cool. Oh yeah, it's true. You get 300 from just following. That is true. So just from following, you can unlock the emote for what? What would that be? 80 times 3, 240 days. No, 240 days. <laughs> 240 points, you can unlock it for 3 days. Uh, should I be making the... This hair maybe a bit thicker? I think it's fine for now. Let's work on the rest of the side there. All the way down here. Hmm. Now I did leave the space out here for the the hair strand, but I didn't leave one in the upper eyebrow. Hopefully that's not too much of an issue. Let's see. Uh Connect this back up again, so we don't have that random space there. Ooh, that's fine, I think. Ooh, oh, actually, there we go. Lines up nicely along the thing. And have another strand over here. Ah, I think it's fine. Yeah. And then we just rebuild the, what it, I suppose it's the eyelashes, right? Not the eyebrows. Ooh. Make it a bit thicker. Because I remember that line I did draw with a slightly thinner line. Now let's work on this big, big strand here. didn't really connect very nicely to that one. There we go. Much better. There we go. Actually, I was saying that the hair was going to be a big issue, but considering it's basically just a whole bunch of straight lines, it's a lot easier than I thought. I'm probably going to regret saying that as I get towards the end, but for now at least. These big jagged, almost like stalactites. Is it stalactites or is it stalagmites? I know one of them is the, like the bottom and one of them is the top. In terms of like those, the cave rock formation things. Let's see. And we have another strand of hair here. Ooh, there's quite a few actually. Let's see. Mm. Comes back up here. A big one's coming down all the way here. Thing is, I'm getting a little bit lost now with how thick some of these sketch lines are. But I think I can make out what I need to do. Actually, wait, that one random line, I think, is a bit unnecessary here. There we go. Oh, the, what is it? I suppose the bangs are done now. So, just finish up the last bit over here on the side. 
Ooh. Make sure they're connected. I haven't thought about how I'm actually going to color these yet as well. That's another big thing. I might just <laughs> take the easier and just throw the paint bucket at them. For the easy full coloring. Uh, wait, I should probably erase that bit there. In the cheek. Because obviously the hair would be in front of it, right? Uh, there we go. We go. Much better. Just have to remember to turn the eraser off now. Hmm. And here we have oh, hair at the back. But let's maybe work on connecting it up at the top here first. Uh. Hmm. Wait. Oh, I'm not using the the curve tool. Let's get the little heart first is that isn't going to be interfering with some other stuff yet. I really like the fact as well that the little bongo cat is chilling in my hair as well. Never forgetting my roots. I mean, I still have bongo cat next to me as well. I don't know where I would be without my little bongo cat. Uh, there we go. It looks fine, I think. I like how it's almost like smacking me with uh, the heart, chilling on my head, hitting me there. Yeah. The beady little eyes there. One and two. That's something I don't even have to use the curve tool for, since it's just a uh, two black dots. Now then, actually, let me make the pen size a little bit bigger for the mouth, just so it's easier to see. And... Give it a bit of a curve at the bottom. There we go. It's a nice looking mouth, I think. Now let's draw the rest of the Bongo Cat's body. little paws and let's throw the other paw over here and now the body make it a bit bigger again the pen size that is oh look at that chunky boy there we go the rest of him up here. Oh, let's connect the arm a bit there. Oh, bit weird. Blind. Transition a little bit smoother. There we go. And now for the ears. Nice and big and pointy. I mean, just look at how easy it was to draw that ear with the curve tool. It honestly just feels like cheating. Considering that this is all with the mouse. There we go. Um, actually, the one is a bit pointier than the other. Let me make this one a little bit more pointy, I think. There we go. There we go. Two pointy little ears. Let's see how it's looking so far. Uh, I can try to maybe make this part up here a little bit smoother, I think, as well. So it did look a little bit pointy. But again, I think when you zoom out, it should be fine. Yeah, that's fine, I think. It's not cheating. 
That's true. Cheating would be using a pen and tablet. That would be cheating. Of course, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, obviously. Yes, came back from giving a bath to your dogger out of duty. Heck, I'm fast. <laughs> Almost done the whole inking. I mean... With the help of the Bezier Curve tool, yes, I'm almost done. <laughs> a lot of the prey should be going to whoever designed that tool. I'm just using what has been given to me in my arsenal. And again, though, this honestly, if I had to try and draw this myself without the sketch work, that would have been, ooh, that would have been something now. But this is all thanks to Artino Enjo, who drew this in the first place. I initially thought that this was like the full thing until I heard, oh no, this is just, you know, this is just a sketch. I thought, what? How is this just a sketch? It's like a full completed thing already. Here we go. Uh, let's see, where will this go down to? And get a little pointy there. Uh, there you go. Actually, wait, is that one necessary? Uh, it might not be necessary, actually. I have that extra strand there. Oh, those little S emotes there. <laughs> now then, it's almost done. Almost done. Then the conundrum after that will be how to, how do I color all of this? Wait, I'm going to make my head uneven, aren't I? Let's see. And then give it a slight curve because I don't want to have a, a flat head. I mean, okay, I did give myself a bit of a flat head, but I think it's fine. Unless I... Ah, you know what? Ooh. Yeah, let me try and do that. Get rid of this flat top a bit. Erase that old line out. Again though, I feel like I'm being a bit too pedantic because I'm sure a lot of the stuff won't be visible at the end. But the problem is it's visible to me right now and that's what matters. <laughs> Is this connected up? That's no, not. Couple more strands left. Mm hmm. This is a very rounded over here, but I assume a pointier style would be a bit better. Sort of the, the long hair at the back. Starting to take a few, I suppose, creative liberties here now. Hmm, actually, I'm not too sure how far out the hair should go. Maybe just like that should be fine. In MS Paint and hopefully here too, I have the bucket for little. Yes, I do. Thankfully, that's gonna be my, that is gonna be my crutch for coloring. Yeah. Because my goodness, I don't know how I would color this normally. That's why I've been very careful to make sure that all of the lines are closed properly, because I don't know, I don't want to do the thing where, you know, you drop the bucket and then the entire canvas is suddenly the one color because you forgot to close a single gap in a line. Let's see now. Oh, wait. How do I... There you go. I think that looks fine now. 
that right side does look a little bit odd still, I think. Mm. Any over here as well. I think I didn't connect this very well. Well. Got a random bump in it. I think that should be a little bit better now. Let's just connect it back up again. That looks fine now. Uh, I don't know. I feel like there could be a bit more strands to have like... I don't know what to call it. Texture, I suppose, at the back. Like that, maybe. And like this. Oh, what if I have it come out in front like that? I'm really not too sure now. I think this is fine now. I mean, I don't know if I'll do any better than that. <laughs> Plus again, when you zoom out far enough, it's a very minuscule part that you don't really notice, so I think it's fine. And I guess. First things first, we save because it's been a while since I saved. And now, yes, the coloring part. Mm, I suppose I should make a a second layer for that, right? Let's. I don't know why, but I feel like there should be a. Should there be a line there? I'm not too sure. Oh wait, there's a little bit of a mark left from the previous lines. Let's just get rid of that. Like slightly grey pixels. <laughs> I'm just noticing now. Clean that up. There we go. Now, the colouring. There is a bucket tool, right? Yes, there is. Let's see. Let's start with the easy ones, the hearts. Because that we can just fill with red, right? Uh, question is, what shade of red? Wait, first things first, let me make a separate layer, just in case. And let me actually la name them as well, because naming them should be pretty useful, I think. Let's name this one Color. And name the previous one Ink. So, oh, see, that's what I mean. I wanted to drop the, the red paint on the heart, and just the heart, but the hand suddenly got painted as well. I don't know why. Hmm. That's not, so there must have been a slightly mismatched gap. Saving time before it might crash? Yeah, good course of action. Thankfully there's been no crashes. Just touch wood, actually, that there's been no crashes. That makes me wonder now, why is this bleeding into the hand? It looks like it's... Oh wait, I think I can see why. There's a very, 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 very faint spot where instead of being solid black, it's like a very, very tiny grey instead. So let's seal that hole up. And now, we should be able to bucket just the heart. There we go. A nice little colour for the heart. And I suppose the highlights... Do we just sort of take a lighter version of the red? Like that? Or do we just use white straight up like that? To give that nice shine feature? Hmm. The interesting thing as well is, again, when I was getting recommended all of those drawing videos, this colored triangle, I suppose? The, the video I was recommended was about how, I think it was, if you change the saturation of a color, it actually gets darker. Or at least in some cases. Because of the way the, the color square at least works. Because I'm more familiar with the square, right? Where you have the... What is it? I think they called it the value going along the up and down and the saturation on the left and right. 
value being like you know how dark it is so if you have max value then it's you know very bright if it's minimum value it's pitch black and then the saturation if it's all the way on the left it's white if it's all the way on the right it's very vibrant and it was very interesting but then apparently that's for the color square but this triangle is supposedly tries to fix that issue of visualizing the three things, so the value, the saturation, and the hue. Hmm. But I will say though, I think I, I do like the pure white highlights. I think. I'm not too sure. I'm bad with colors. But let's just go ahead and uh, may as well do the rest of the hearts while we're here. Oh, never mind. Once again, the neither of these hearts were closed up properly. So they were bleeding everywhere. Let's see, I think I can spot where they weren't closed up. Uh? Oh wait, I should also probably be doing this in the ink layer, yeah. It's weird though that it's, if it's slightly off color, then it bleeds out. I guess it has to be a solid black line of the same color going all the way around for it to fill properly. Let's see now. Hopefully... Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Oh wait, hang on. Hmm. I just realized I've been coloring on the ink layer. Hmm. Maybe if I do the select thing. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with doing the color on the ink layer as well. I think. <laughs> Unless I try and do this, maybe. Oh. Uh, hmm. Wait. I actually remember about this. that actually looks fine now. Hmm. How does that compare to coloring it on the ink layer itself? Oh no, different really. Let's see though. We have the feather and the grow at zero. Hmm. Looks a little bit different. Actually, I'm sure yeah, it's fine if I just fill in on the ink layer. But let's just do that then. Fill in these hearts. All with the same red. And let's see. The hair. What should we do next? The skin maybe? Actually, the jacket. The coat jacket might be easier. Hmm. But it's, a, it's a red shirt. But not exactly as red as the heart. Slightly darker. Let's do that. Ah, that looks fine, I think. Actually, let's make it a tiny bit darker. I don't want it to resemble too much the... The same color as the hearts. What color are the cuffs of my shirt, though? Let me actually take a peek. Black and gold. Hmm. So I suppose we can just color those in with a very dark color. Like a dark brownish maybe. Where's brown on this color wheel? Where's brown? Actually, that might be. That might be good. Mm, and now we have the gold highlights. So we can just take bright yellowish uh, what would a goldish color be something like this maybe and use our trusty little bezier curve tool maybe make it a bit bigger as well i think that's fine I will say the the shirt and the 
sleeve cuff do have a bit of a similar looking color though that muddy looking color so maybe let's try and change that color make the red a bit more spicy for lack of a better word ah. wait what that's weird that's very weird when i color in the shirt it looks like the other ones are adjusting too that's very weird that's super strange it looks like everything else is getting lighter when i change it hmm. maybe it's just my eyes playing a trick on me or something yeah but i think it's fine hmm now, the skin, let's just go with a nice little pale peachy color, I guess. That should be fine, I think. Mm. How's it look when there's no the white background to contrast it? Maybe it have a little bit more color to it. Mm, why is this so hard to find a nice skin tone color? Actually, wait, can I use the color drop? But no, I can't. Mm, that looks fine, maybe. It looks so weird, this color. Actually, ah, there we go. That looks fine, I think. Much better. Much, much, much better. Let's also give the, the neck that color. I think that's fine. Oh, wait a minute. I just realized the iris over there gets colored as well. Mm. So let's actually seal that up a bit around the eye and get rid of that the bleed into the iris. Let's black. Let's get a very, 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 very tiny little line. it with white again hopefully there we go hmm. now the eyes pull that in ah, close enough I think a lot of red going on here to be fair though there's lots of hearts, so hearts, love, red. I think it fits. Ah, the mouth as well. Uh, what should I have the mouth color be? I think that's fine. Let's also give it a tongue. And that can be like the back of the mouth, and now this can be the tongue. Mm, actually... Wait, let's put this beneath the ink layer. Oh, wait, hang on. I'm silly. Hmm. What if I were to do... This. There we go. A nice little tongue. Just have to be careful not to draw over the edge of the mouth.
There we go. I think that works fine for a tunnel. Ooh, it's a bit too bright actually now that I think about it. Let's turn down turn it down just a little bit. Do the trick. There we go. That's a batch better looking tongue. By the way, I just realized there's ah there's some skin that I've got to color in as well. Here, 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 and here. Now then. Is the hair. Hmm, which is like a, a silverish color. So. Let's take this. This is a test run. Let's see how it looks. Oh! Didn't mean to color in the lines. Uh oh. It fills out the entire thing. That means there's something. That's missing. I think I found it. It's this little spot over here. So now it should pull properly. But I think this is a bit too dark, maybe? So let's make it a little bit lighter. Wait. Wait, what? That's very weird now. It's doing that same thing where filling in. Why is it doing that? Where it sort of changes all of the colors when I fill in the one spot. Maybe it is just my eyes playing tricks on me. Where it sort of auto adjusts the rest of the colors. But again, that could just be my eyes. Now then. Hmm. We use the paint bucket. Just throw paint everywhere. I think that mm, could be a bit lighter, actually. That looks fine, I think. There we go. I'm actually curious, what if we... Technically speaking, I'm sure most people use dark mode, right? On Twitch, so if I were to make the background completely black, yeah, well, let's not have the cat go black as well. Like I said, I assume everybody's using dark mode, so odds are this emote would be on a dark background. Because if you're not using dark mode, then, well, you're an animal. But let's just see. Why is it still colouring in the cat? Is there still a spot that isn't properly sealed off? Where though? Where could that be? Here? No. Here maybe? No. What up here? Hmm. Now let's try that again. Ah, it's fine. Alright, it's because it's transparent, of course, that's why. I need to fill in with white, these spaces. So the cat is white, paw is white, shirt is white, eyes are white. So is that little section there. There we go. So now, if we were to fill in the background with black, as if it were on night mode, that's what it would look like, in theory. Night mode. Oh wait, is this another spot that I forgot to color in? Whoops. Another strand of hair. There we go. Oh, wait. 
and the skin piece here that I've got to color in. Now, to make it a little bit better, I think I have to do some highlighting as well. Not that I know how. Actually, first, technically speaking, the shoulders have sort of that, not really like a badge, but those flaps. Where it has those brown rectangles and also the gold stripe. So let's maybe try and draw that quickly. Where is the curve tool? There we go. Ah, that actually looks fine. Now we just need the, the gold stripes. There's two, right? Yeah, there's two. Oops. Curve tool again. That's one. There's two. Yeah, that looks fine, I think. Maybe I can make the the brown straps a little bit bigger, I think, actually. Mm. There we go. Now let's try those gold stripes. One more time. There's one. There's two. Actually, mm, I'm supposed to be close to the edge. Ah, why does it look so weird? There we go. There we go. Now for the, what should we have? Hair highlights, I suppose? How do I do that now? Hmm. I suppose I can just take like a, a lighter shade of the, the gray. And just draw random lines. That's what, actually, let's use those brushes that I was talking about. I have no idea which one to use though. Let's have a look around though. What different brushes do we have? Digital, ink, paint. What does this one look like? Oh, oh wow, that, it really looks like a paintbrush. Like the strokes and everything. Like each bristle. That's crazy that there are brushes for that. But I think let's just stick with the good old digital one. Oh, mm, Maybe we can use the paint one and just make it a bit smaller. Much, much, much smaller for the highlights. That looks actually, that actually looks fine. So let's see. Oh wait, actually, I know what I can do. I'll pretend like I'm I'm an actual artist where they do that thing where they have the color palettes up in the top corner. I don't know why I'm trying to draw white as a, a palette. But, hmm, because I know there's like going to be different types of shades that I'll be using. Let's see though. If we take this color here and put it on here, there's some highlights. The question is where do they be belong though? I don't know how, how highlights work. So I'll just put them on each and every strand. I don't know anything better. I think that looks fine, actually. And let's put some more up here as well. And let's also give the these upper strands some highlight as well. Very, very faint highlights. And then, even add some very, very bright white highlights in some of these bigger ones. Palette making in the corner for checking. Yeah. I, I do notice on the right though, there's like a, a thing where you can see the most recently used colors. So I know that's also useful. But I know it's what uh, actual artists do, so I thought, ah, let me imitate it. Because I know you can use 
like if I press control, I get the color picker where I can just splot, like choose this and now I have that color that I chose. I mean, it looks okay, I suppose. We can add some more up here. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing with the when it comes to the coloring side of things. I just feel like I'm making a mess everywhere in the hair. <laughs> but I think it does look... It adds a bit more character than just having it all be a solid colour though, to be fair. Control hockey for eyedrop. Well, yeah, it does make a lot of... It does save a lot of time. I'm not sure if it would be the same in all programs, but... It definitely helps now. My hand is constantly hovering on the bottom left side of my keyboard, so I can I can either use Control or uh, Control Z for when I make a mistake. The two most commonly used keyboards for me right now. Uh, actually, hmm. I wonder if I should try and technically have a darker shade for the back hair because technically that would be in the darkness, right? It wouldn't be highlight highlighted. But let's uh, give it some darker shades. There we go. I suppose my face should also be like highlighted as well. Hmm. Obviously, the neck area would be slightly darker. Uh, wait, I don't know why I'm still using the paintbrush. I should be using the the regular one here. Well, otherwise you get that bleeding effect. Oh, that's a bit too big. I forgot to change the size of the brush. I'm just worried I'm drawing over the lines now. I guess this is where I realize working in different layers may have been very helpful. So that I don't have to worry about going over the lines. But again, hopefully when you zoom out far enough, you don't notice it and you can dismiss the imperfections. Oh yeah, that makes sense, right? You have the the shade from underneath your, on your neck from underneath your head. That's a realistic thing, right? And I suppose there would also be a shade from like the hair above you, right? That's a thing. And I also can't really cheat my way with the that curve tool. Since this would be like the forehead, I'm assuming the hair would be overhanging quite a bit of it. Under the neck and under the hair, yeah. Seems like a good choice for places to shadow it. Especially with these points up here, very high up on the head where... In theory, yeah, the, the hair would overhang, right? It would hang in front of your forehead. spaces to reduce the size of the brush even more. There's a tiny little gap. Oh. Yeah, it's fine. 
There we go. Now this part here. Oh, careful not to go over the lines though. And hmm, the only thing is got a very weird, like a jagged shadow. Ah, I think it's fine though. Actually, yeah, it's not too noticeable how jagged they are. a little bit of shadow over here. A bit of a narrow space, so I'll make the brush a bit smaller again. And over here as well. Because obviously if you have the overhanging hair on the side, surely you'd have a little bit of shadow. Well, a little bit. Tiny little crevice. Just drawing, coloring it in a single pixel by single pixel, one by one. There we go. Let's see, let's also get rid of that little splotch mark up there in the corner. How does this look now? I think that looks fine. Not sure how small it can go. I'm sure it's recognizable. So technically speaking, we started out from this to this. I feel like the colors could obviously use a bit of work, but I think this is the best I'll be able to do at least. Let's see, what happens if we try and color it again? Whoop! Yeah, I think that's fine. To think, we sort of. Well, I say we. There was initially a solid white background, and then Artino Enjo added this beautiful sketch, and then I came in with essentially just added the lines and uh, an abomination of colors. <laughs> I wonder if actually the bongo cat should also get some... Actually no, I think it's perfectly fine as is with just the pure white. I think it looks fine like that. So that's our first one down. It only took us what, an hour and 45 minutes to draw in all the lines and do some paint bucket magic. I think it's pretty fine though. Hmm, now I maybe should probably work on one or two others, I think. Maybe I, I could do one more. Uh, let's see. Now here's the issue though. There's no uh, sketch lines for me now, so I have to come up with something all by myself. So I do have some ideas though. I know there is a... Uh, art is no joke. It is no joke. Like, honestly, it's it, it just makes it so much more impressive when you see people that, you know, all of those fancy, what is it? The, the fancy commissioners that charge money for, to do custom emails. Like now I understand why they charge for it. And it makes sense. It's not exactly an easy thing to do. It's perfectly understandable. Those are things. And I mean like, that's just for emotes. Imagine those. I remember when I was initially thinking about streaming and stuff like that. I was looking around and I thought to myself, wait, what? In order to get a model, people would charge you like, what? Thousands or not a thousand, like $500 just for an image of a model. That's crazy. Now I think, wow, they should be charging more <laughs> because of how crazy the amount of time and effort must be, especially to make things look good. 
Like, I mean, I was able to do this, but by no means does it look amazing. It's just uh, acceptable. But that was the first one. Now I'll have to... I'd like to at least try once to make something of my own. And I know there was a, an image. The only thing I know how to draw is the... I don't know if people know of Toho, but there's the Yukiris. Yukiris. They're like the little disembodied heads that just float around. But there's also something from Hidomari Sketch. I think it's Hidomari Sketch. With uh, the how to draw you know. You'd like to see a little bongo cat emote? That's the thing. So, if you have Hidomari Sketch, how to draw you know. I remember I first saw this image and I thought, wow, that looks very simple to draw. I wonder if I can copy and paste this. Uh, the resolution might be a bit bad, but let's see if I can. It was, it was one of those classic things where, you know, it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to draw this thing. But it's not like the ones where, you know, it's hard to draw an owl and it says, just draw two circles and then draw the rest of the owl. It was an actual step-by-step -step thing. So let me see if I can... Oh yeah. yeah. So, this is what it looked like. You know, in order, to draw, in order to end up with this cute little face at the end here, it's just a couple of simple steps that you have to follow, right? Uh, is it showing up? Hmm. But yeah. There's, what is there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 steps. And it starts up with just drawing a single line, which is basically the entire face. Adding two more lines for the, I suppose, the eyes. Actually, let's try this. Let's, let's do a little practice run. Can I shift this to the side? Let's try and draw this using this step-by-step -step guideline. But again, of course, I'll be cheating and using this curve tool. So step one, you draw this little curved face. There we go. I'd say that looks pretty similar. Uh, wait a minute. There we go. Let's use this one. Man, the... This curve tool make, actually makes us feel like cheating. But yeah, there we go. And then it's just two simple little lines for the eyes. One there. One there. And then just a V for the hair. There's our V. And then sort of like a tail end, I suppose you would call it that. The line tool is not cheating. <laughs> That's true. It's, again, I'm just using what has been given to me. It's simply just a part of my arsenal. Uh, let's see. Ooh, this looks... Maybe if I had a bit more space, it would be a bit better, but... There we go. That's the back of the head. But for real, it's a time. It is absolutely a time-saving tool. Because I know <laughs> the meme is that when people try and draw things manually, like if I were to try and draw a curve, I'd do that, and then people would go, "Oh no, that's not good enough." Draw it again. Oh no, now it's too jagged. Draw it again. Oh, it's too straight. Draw it again. Oh no, again and again and again and again and again. Whereas with the the curve tool, you can get it exactly how you want, no matter what. Let's see though. On to step number five. Let's just draw two little spikes of hair. There's one. One. And two. Next one is add some more spikes. One, two, three. Four. I suppose that's like the, the bangs on the one side. And then, let's see, what is seven now? Ah, it's like adding the banks on the other side, I suppose, so. At the edge of the V, you have another line. And then you have... Bangs over here. 
pop 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 and then what is next is that just a, an x like a, a hair piece i suppose x and a tiny little smiley face little v pop pop and then lastly what else is there they're just the little hatches for the cheeks. Boop, boop, boop. I suppose I should try and connect this up a bit more at the top. Yeah. That's essentially how you draw Yuno know, from Hiramari Sketch. In 10 simple steps. So I thought I'd maybe at least try and do something similar at least for another emote. Question is, what the? We have a like a heart emote to show like, oh, you love something or to show appreciation. But yeah, something like a bongo cat. Hmm. Well, let's just at least draw that those curves because I know that's what we can do initially oh. actually let's fill up some more of the canvas uh, hmm. there we go it's great damn cute it is when I first thought I thought oh wow that's how to draw a cute little moa blob. Let's see that. That's gonna be the cheeks. Mm. Oh, the one I did. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Let's see then. Can do tiny little ears here. That looks like a bunny ear actually, the way it's been shaped out. One ear. Yeah, let's have another ear over here. I honestly don't even have any idea what I'm going to be drawing. I'm just coming up with something. <laughs> and let's see. Top the head here. Hmm. What can I have? What would a good emote be? Let's also just co connect the rest of the body, I suppose. Now I just have one fat blob. Mm. I suppose like the, the pog emote is always a good one to have. So let's see. Something with like big eyes or like the, the the equivalent of the the booba you know, you know where you <laughs> actually what if i just do this uh, let's do that there you go <laughs> the two eyes bulging out and let's just brush that up a bit get rid of that line these over there of course this is very rough though let's see though and they have mouth like the what is it the big surprise face the oh face hmm the ears though could look like they could maybe be a bit better look too pointy like a dog ear almost. Should be a bit more rounded, I think. And softer. Let's erase those. Get rid of this one as well. And let's try a different set of ears. 
Hmm. Maybe shorter, I think, and stubbier. Nah. Why are ears so hard to draw? Zooming in in the target, actually, huh? Is this target acquired? Acceptable, I think. Mm, actually, there's a lot of space up the top, so let's let's add something there. How about adding like an exclamation mark, like when uh, I'm thinking back to Metal Gear Slug or something, when somebody spots you and, the, and they just have the exclamation, the huh, and the no, the what is it? The yellow or is it a red exclamation mark? Hmm. It's something it appears above their heads. So let's maybe add one of those. Uh, actually, let's just use a circle tool. Uh, that might be a bit too big, actually. That's fine. That's a good size. And then if we this coming up the top maybe this could actually be a bit bigger there we go maybe we can have two actually as well a second or maybe just a, a row of three all in a row have another exclamation point there. It's almost like ellipses, but a uh, very loud version of it instead. I realize now as well, I could be using the circle tool, but I don't know why. I feel like it's funnier <laughs> when it's hand drawn like this. And have another exclamation point up here. Now let's also fill it in with a nice vibrant looking red. One, boop, boop. Maybe also even these can have a little red center. Oh, like so. It's a bit too thin of a thing. Why is it? Okay, there we go. Uh, and wow, the stabilizer is making it a little bit harder actually to draw properly. Because I'm making such small movements. There we go. Three exclamation points. Mm, I think I took it off a bit too much there. There we go. Now the eyes, though. Um, it actually, this actually reminds me of that booba emote. Uh, what is the what does a booba emote look like actually? Oh wait, hang on. Something I should be doing. So now this is what artists normally do. Uh, I mean, it looks fine if you flip it. So I think it's it's good. Oh wow, wait, what? I tried googling booba for the that old Pepe booba emote, but I came up with something very weird actually. It's, it looks like some monster thing. Uh, let's see, what does the regular one look like? Oh, it just has some black dots at the end of the eyes for the, the booba. Booba? Let's not put it towards the end, so it has a bit of iris left over. Wait, you know what, let me just use... Yeah, I'm cheating again and using the circle emote. Or the... The circle thing. Mm. 
actually, yeah, it's fine. One there. One there. Looks so stupid. <laughs> Uh, hmm. I mean, it's a bongo cat, so it should have paws as well, so... Let's see, what if the paws are just like... Ooh! Actually, I might try and do that. Let's see, how can I add the paws in? Like the, the paws are up in surprise. How would that even work? Like this? And then I suppose I can just erase the the body lines from earlier. Well, did these look like arms though? It just look like <laughs> it just looks like feet, <laughs> like Kirby feet. Like if I if I were to just um, paint these red as well. It looks like some weird Kirby monster. Uh, what if we make it pink as well? Actually, no. What does Kirby pink look like? It's K Kirby Booba. If I... Let me also... Sort of section off the eyes. So the irises don't also get that color. Oh. Two pixels. This is essentially this is Kirby. Oh, well, not that dark. Kirby when he sees Big Booba. <laughs> uh, let's see though. Let's erase this. Oh, make it a bit bigger. Too rough around the edges. Stroke is too much. I'm actually. I'm actually. Let me color that back in again. That, that. And where is it? Again, section of the eyes. And fill it in with pink. I'm saving this. I don't think I'll use this as an emote, but I'm just gonna save it just in case it for some reason becomes usable. Kirby, Booba. Now then. I mean, it kinda looks like a bongo cat. Except it's just the paws. How do you get the paws? Hmm. Let's see. Oh, wait, what? What am I looking at now? Because the, the bongo cat is always... I actually, I can make it sit in front of the, the desk. That's what I can do. Let's try and do that then. Oh. Let's erase the lower section. And have it sit in front of a desk. So it can have its paws up there on there. And let's get rid of that line as well. Hmm. Where's the line? There we go. We just have a, a nice little desk. Like a little desk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's poor slamming on it. Uh, hmm. Oh, actually, yeah. And if I draw the paws on, I can do the, like, what is it? The action lines to show that it's slapping the table. Almost like, you know, you, you're you slamming the table out of outrage. Like, what? Booba? Where? 
Uh, let's see. That's a brilliant idea. Never going to give you up. Brilliant idea. Let's see. Then. Connect this back down here. Connect that back up there. Oh my goodness. Those are very janky lines. But I like it. <laughs> there we go. And obviously you have to have the like the oh my gosh face as well. <laughs> I don't know if I should have the, the full mouth above it or Hmm. And then I forgot what the what is the actual how do the arms look on the original Bongo Cat? Oh, right, 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 right. I need to have it like that. Actually, uh, have one like that. And have the other one like. I like how in the first drawing I was so reliant on the. For this one, I was so reliant on the curve tool and how useful it was. Whereas here now, I'm just embracing the jagged lines of the shaky hand brush. Just because I think it makes it look funnier, actually, when it's bad like this. But again, as well, when you're zoomed out, I don't think the jagged lines will be too noticeable. Uh, let's see, and give it a bit, just a little bit. Try giving him his normal mouth just to see how it works. Ah. Very good idea. Just like the classic little, like, the... I suppose you can call it like a W mouth? For lack of better words. Let's see. Look at that little bit leading over there. And let's see. Where is the black color now? <laughs> I don't he normally has a W mouth, but I don't know why that t just the tiny little smirk. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. <laughs> It's like a little kid just silently going like he 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 he. Uh, I don't know why that's making me laugh so much. Uh, let me know what you think though. I could try and uh, complete the rest of the mouth or change the mouth up a bit. But I just find that funny. <laughs> just a tiny little smirk. You know what's funny as well is the song that's playing right now is the it's like a song from Kirby, which just emphasizes what we had earlier. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, actually it's uh, let's color in the desk first quickly. So, in theory, this is what it would look like by itself, but I think it does need some color. Question is, how do we color this? Hmm. Because the bongo cat is white, but it looks a bit plain, I think. I feel like we can add more to this, definitely. Again, I'm not sure how uh, visible this will be, but I just want to add it. Just because I thought it'd be funny. I mean, if we have the desk in front of him, we may as well. May as well. Write something on it as well.
<laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, actually, wait. What, what does the regular booba emote look like? Uh, hmm. Making his mouth but in the open state. Yeah, that is a good thought. Uh, just like a regular. Like a, oh! <laughs> Something like that, maybe? Like when he's walking. Ah! Like the talking uh, mouth. So, oops. Oh, how did it. Uh, yeah. So essentially, <laughs> let me just get rid of this. Oh wait, no. I have to use white. Get rid of that. And then, where is it? <laughs> then let's have a look. What does the walking mouth look like again? I forgot. Oh, it looks pretty good. This or, uh, I can't tell with the delay. This or the, uh, the round one. So I'm pretty sure this is, I think this is what I normally had it look like when he speaks. Right? Yeah, it's just like a, a sideways D. Is this what we're gonna go with? Actually, let's see as well. Uh, what would it look like if it's in dark mode? Ooh. Oh, oops. Blurst. <laughs> Let me also add sort of like a, a background. Not a background, but a a layer of white behind it. You love it? <laughs> I'm glad you do. Wait, what? Why is it not... Uh, the round one I think looks a bit better. You think so? Let's uh, try that one out again. Because again, after all, these are emotes that you guys are going to be using, so... I want it to be fun to use. Uh, yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. Uh, maybe I can make it. Yeah, there is a bit of a delay. That's what I was considering when you said uh, that it looked perfect. I was like, wait a minute. I was busy changing it when you said that, so... But yeah. I'll change it to the round one. Mm. I think the big issue is because of the connection, which is very spotty for some reason. That's where the, the issue of the delay is coming from. Let's try though, and I'm actually looking at OBS now and I see like there is a shit ton of frames that were dropped. Hmm. Let's see though, I feel like I should add some white background to the, some of the stuff, just so it pops out a bit more in the dark mode. Where is the white brush? Actually, oh wait, that's in the background, whoops. So if we make that fully black, and we have this extra layer here, where we use white. Now we can just, oh wait, 
turn the opacity down a bit. There we go. Now we can just outline it in this layer. Mm. Let's see. But in theory, in light mode, this shouldn't make a difference because, well, the background is white already, but in dark mode, it makes the outlines just a little bit easier to see. Got there. Yeah, hopefully though that this is the that's the face that you meant. Never gonna give you up. Mm -hmm. Actually, wait, what am I doing? I can be using the, the curve tool for this. Oh my goodness, so much faster. Like a night and day difference. My goodness. Of course, we can't forget the exclamation points up here at the top. Oh. Uh, that's the one outline done. And let's do the other one. Actually, I can use the paintbrush for this one. Start here. Just to be careful not to make it too big of an outline. And another one over here. There we go. Now for the I suppose the top of them? I don't know what they're called. Outline these. Oh. And the top of this. And over here. Could use a bit thicker of an outline, I think, as well. But in theory, if you're in dark mode, you can still see the outline just fine. I'm not sure if the the booba word is still visible when it's gonna be small, but I think it's it should be fine. The eyes maybe could be a bit uh bigger I think. So let's maybe increase that size a bit. Just to emphasize how big the booba possibly are. Oh wait, I'm drawing in the background. What am I doing? I'm silly. better I think.
Hmm. I think that looks fine, though. What do you guys think? Hopefully, if you uh, if you can actually see it on stream, because I don't know how it's looking for you guys, because uh, I'm looking over in OBS and I just see everything is going to shit in terms of the, the bitrate. possible that the uh, couldn't be the music that was slowing the stream down because I was streaming it off of YouTube but I think what we have here are booba emote as well as the, the heart emote I think these are pretty decent Scale them down. They're a little bit hard to see, but I think you get the message. We were great indeed. I don't know why I just find it so funny to look at. But yeah, I think judging by like my OBS, I think it's definitely going to be a bit of a struggle to carry on. So I think here is a good time to call it. We've gone, we've done two emotes in the span of like about two and a half hours. And so, I'll try and upload these tonight and then hopefully in the near future, you guys will be able to use these. But until then though, I think it's time to call it a stream. It's been very fun. Oh yeah, don't worry. The, the black background isn't part of the... It's not going to be part of the thing since uh, I was just using that to see what it would look like in night mode. Because I assume it would be a dark background in night mode. Like obviously it'll be transparent like this or uh, like this. That's why I added the, um, I made sure to add these white sort of like highlights I suppose to the back of the image. So that if it is against a dark background, then, you know, you can still see the outlines. But yeah, I think this was actually surprisingly fun. I never knew I would have so much fun drawing stuff like this. But I think one of the main reasons why it was fun was because you guys were here watching. You know, I wasn't alone and uh, I could laugh at my mistakes and sort of share my thoughts with you guys. So hopefully, if you guys can still hear me, because I can see my OBS going on the fritz. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream and had fun. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you were inspired yourself to try drawing something yourself in the future. But again, I think it is time now to leave. And when I say that, I mean to raid somebody else's channel. Uh... Who is online though? That is the question. Do we know of anybody that is online? Are there any suggestions of people who are online that I can possibly raid? Let's have a look. Uh, 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 uh. Who is all online right now? Doesn't look like many people are. You shook it off fast. <laughs> Ours was just a mouse. And I kept talking and commenting while focusing on the drawings. Oh, you love the stream? Oh, Enjo, I'm glad you shut up. And uh, once again, actually, thank you for the sketch work that you did. You were the one that uh, provided this for us, this lovely first emote. But yes, let's have a look and see uh, who is all online. Duh, duh, duh. Is. Mane online, she is. Who else is there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I 
Has everybody already gone offline? I don't know. Just some whitey's gone offline. Bluebee's just finished as well. Uh, hang on. Thank you, it was fun seeing you reacting to Hamper. No, no, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed the stream, guys. Actually, somebody else who was doing... Somebody else is doing art as well. Is she drawing... What is, it? is that C9 Vienna? I wonder. It looks like it. But let's have a look as well. She looks like she might be quite far in. Who else is online? Actually... Let's raid her. I'm in her channel. She's also drawing. So, if you guys are in the mood for more art, you can send her over there. And the raid message shall be... Let's see. Because I can't think of anything better. It's the same thing that we've always used. Maybe this. Uh, hopefully, my internet doesn't die out on me before you guys can get that. Yes, that is what we're going to be using to raid Amane. So, once again, hope you guys all enjoyed the stream and had fun. Even if it was a bit of a struggle, I think, because of uh, my internet issues. So, hopefully then, you guys are able to see that message and uh, convey it across to her when you show up. Come, Amma. <laughs> Welcome. 